Welcome back to Proverbs 31 Life. Today, we are looking at, is the Lord your strength? We've looked at, is the Lord your savior? Is the Lord your shepherd? And today we are on, is the Lord your strength? There's lots of verses about this and sometimes we don't, we don't really know how to apply it. And that's, that's the concern. So let's start with defining the word strength. Strength is defined as the quality or state of being physically strong or the capacity of an object or substance to withstand great force or pressure. That is the Lord. He, no, he is our ability to withstand great force or pressure. We need him. Life brings us great force and pressure. There's trials, there's heartache, there's spiritual warfare, peer pressure, demands of others, and it takes great strength to withstand, and sometimes we just can't. It's, it's greater than we are. The truth is, many don't make it. This is why suicide rates are through the roof, and it is mostly among our youth because they have not been raised in church. They have not been directed to the Lord. Um, as parents, we've left our position of taking our kids to church and praying for them. And of course, this isn't everyone, but if you just look out at the world, at society as a whole, and that's where the world stands. So we all face trials on this side of eternity. We all live in a fallen, sin-cursed world. We cannot prevent things like disappointment, death, disease, distress, difficulties, or disasters. They are going to come. What are we gonna do with them? Why do some people handle it better than others? Most of the people I really believe that don't handle it well or have other things happen um, is because they are doing this without the Lord. Whether it's an adult, a child, doesn't matter. Doing things with the Lord versus doing things without the Lord, doing it on your own, will yield different results. God does not pick and choose who he helps. Okay, he is available to everyone. And sometimes we can look out at a scene, at a situation, a circumstance, a life, and we can say, where is the Lord? Why isn't he helping? This person said they were praying and asking the Lord. And maybe they did, but we don't know their spiritual condition. If they're lost, if they are backslidden, if they're hiding sin in their heart that God doesn't hear them, we don't know. Just because someone says, well, I prayed to God and asked him to help, but he didn't do it. Is that the character of your loving Heavenly Father? No, it's not. So there's more to it than that. As we have seen in previous posts, looking at um, the Lord being our shepherd and our savior, we see that he also must be our strength. We cannot handle the burdens of life alone. There are too many things that are hugely overwhelming. We're fragile. We cannot handle this. We must learn to trust, walk with, and rely on the one who is never overwhelmed and the one who is never out of control. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. It's not our strength. It's his in us. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 and 10. And he saith unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. This was Paul. We remember all that Paul went through. And he said, if that's what it takes to have God's power in my life and let others see him, then so be it. He was okay with whatever trials came his way. Isaiah 40, verses 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. This is why we need the power of God. Psalm 18 verse 1 says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. David specifically said that God was his strength. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not our might, not our failing finite might, but in his. Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. 
I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. 2 Samuel 22, 33, God is my strength and power and he maketh my way perfect. God is able to strengthen us and his power is enough for anything that we face in this life. We just have to trust him. We have to learn to pray for his strength, pray for his help, rather than relying on our own strength. And when, when God leads us to do something, we have to do it. You know, if you're praying for strength to get through a situation, a circumstance, a friendship, you know, that's having struggles, anything, and God says, you don't need to be friends with that person. I'm trying to pull you away. Do we keep fighting? Or do we say, okay, Lord, you said to let go. I'm going to let go. When we don't let go, when we don't walk away, when we don't do whatever it is that he asks, we are quenching the spirit and we're going to lose that strength and power. God's not going to bless disobedience. He wants to lead and guide you. You just have to let him. Until next time, stay in the word. Stay close to the shepherd and let him lead you in passive righteousness.